Hello and welcome back to the third round. In my New Year video, I had mentioned that I was looking at building a new layout and would use an existing plan from the 1980s Merklin Hanul Gleisanlagen book as a base. It is plan number 10 that can be found in the book on pages 69 to 72. Since then, I've had the time to look a bit deeper into this, and in today's video, I am going to cover my progress so far. First, a small recap. This is the layout. It's a single loop with a terminal on the left and a depot on the right. Trains travel to and from the terminal around the loop, which can be used in both directions. The right-hand side of the layout is configured as a reverse loop, which gives quite a few routing options but can only be used anti-clockwise from the main line. This might seem like a limitation, but it unlocks the fun bit this layout has been designed around. The other way to turn trains around is to use the terminal, and this brings even more play potential with all the maneuvers this requires. Each station track is equipped with a remote uncoupler. This allows a train to enter the station, locomotive first. The locomotive can then be uncoupled at the end of the track. The train can then be taken over by an engine coming from the depot and either sent back on the main line or moved to the shunting yard. I do find the layout lacks functionality in its current shape. It would not allow automated multi-train operations, for example, so you could only have a train going around the loop while shunting maneuvers are happening between the station and the depot area. Secondly, there is the anti-clockwise only reverse loop. The book suggests a modification to change that, which would be to convert one of the station sidings into a pass-through line with the addition of a curve turnout and a change of the curve radius on the main line. It is definitely something I would look into implementing. If this is your first visit to the channel, I set up temporary layouts to run my collection of 1980s Merklin HO models. As everything is temporary, nothing is screwed down, wires remain exposed, and scenery, if you can call it this way, is usually limited to a few accessories. This rules out quite a few options in terms of planning. For example, multi-level layouts or underground shadow stations, which would require a more permanent base. So any elevation has to be able to be freestanding, and I usually install Merklin bridges and pillars to achieve this. But even with this somewhat unconventional approach, planning is the most important step, and I usually invest a lot of time at that stage using the same techniques as anyone planning a permanent layout. This means I not only look into the track plan and the inventory of parts it requires, but also consider routing, block system, and electrical aspects with as much details as possible. This is a large initial time investment, but it is easily recouped as it saves a lot of time and surprises during the build or installation later on. I might collect Merklin 1980s items, but I have moved into the 21st century when it comes to planning. I use a software package called Rail Modeler Pro that runs on Apple Mac OS X. There is a companion app for the iPad, which is called Train Layouts for iPad, and I use it during the build. It saves printing out lots of sheets of paper. So let the planning begin, and let's open Rail Modeler Pro. And we'll start with what I have today. The train room is a garage, which is quite long by UK standards. It's actually longer than the canvas area you see on screen now. Each square on the canvas represents an area of 10 cm by 10 cm, so the current layout measures 540 cm by 120 cm. This gives me just enough space to be able to walk around the layout. Because nothing is screwed down, reach is quite important as the likelihood of shorts or derailment is much higher than in permanent setups. The first consideration will be space. 
I have drawn the walls of the garage as well as blocked space for items I store there. They can be easily moved but I'd like to keep them where they are if at all possible. So let's have a look at how the Merklin plan would fit within the available space. I have transposed it in Rare Modeler Pro, so let me hide the current layout and I'll activate it now. Good start! It's a bit shorter than the current layout and it's also a bit wider at one end, so the bike will be in the way, but it can be easily moved as mentioned before, so it's not a problem. This gives me quite a lot of flexibility in terms of changes. Now let's have a look at the operational aspects of the layout in a bit more detail. I mentioned the single loop and the shunting maneuvers between the terminal and the depot in the recap and this is an aspect I'd like to keep. But it's not as flexible as I would have thought initially. With a train running on the loop, the only route available for safe maneuvering is between the top siding and the depot. Any maneuvers on other sidings would be in the way of oncoming traffic on the loop. Multi-train operation is practically impossible. Two trains on the loop at most at first glance, maybe three if I followed the suggestion to convert one of the sidings into a pass-through line. Then we have the maximum train length. Looking at the platforms, it should be 1.3 meter, including the locomotive. That's basically one locomotive and four 27 centimeter cars. This is less than the current layout which was built for a maximum train length of just over 1.8 meter. To check if I'd really need that length, I looked at Model Railroad Collector Wiki, that's the site I use to manage my collection. One of its features is Consist Management, and this is where I plan all my running sessions. I assemble my consists there and usually put links in the description of the video so people can view the details of the models used. The feature also calculates the consist length and based on what I have entered there, 50% of the trains were more than 1.3 meter long. So 1.8 meter is still the figure I would be aiming for here. There are probably other little things here and there but these were the major point I'd need to address if I wanted to proceed with this. Where to start? Adjusting the maximum train length will require some modifications that would impact the overall shape and size of the layout. So this is what I'm going to work on first. And I will also look at modifications to make shunting maneuvers more flexible in the process. I'll start with the station which you can see now on the canvas in red. I have extended all sidings by 36 centimeters. This gives me a maximum train length of 180 centimeters on the top two platforms. Easy! At the same time, I have moved the station a bit to the left and added a parallel track and two turnouts to move the entrance away from the loop. This should allow maneuvering while trains are running on the main line. Now I can carry on with modifications on the main line. To further isolate the loop from shunting traffic, I've added a track to bypass the crossings between the terminal and the depot. And this bypass leads to the entrance to the pair of sidings at the bottom right hand corner of the layout. I had to modify the geometry a bit and extend them to the new train length. The effect of this change is an increase of the length of the layout by 30 centimeters to the right. That takes care of the loop on that side. Let's go back to the station. With the new parallel track in place, I modified the crossing turnout combination in the center of the layout, and I decided to use it to add a reverse loop to the left of the layout. This is the bit marked in dark blue. In addition, this construct will carry the traffic to and from the depot as it did before. I always wanted to try using what the Germans call a Hosenträger. This is pretty close, so I'm quite excited about using this already. 
This also convinced me to implement the recommendation from the Merklin book, but instead of converting one of the terminal sidings, I added an additional track connected to my sexy Hosenträger, and it's going to the main line with a curved turnout. This required me to change the radius of the curve on the main line to radius 1. We are getting there now. Let's look at the depot. Here it is in brown. The extension of the layout on that side means I have more space now. I will keep the configuration of the depot as it is. I only modified the length of the top siding so I can fit about 160 centimeters worth of rolling stock. And that's the maximum train length minus the length of an average logo. Now, what to do with this extra space? It is just enough to add an electric depot. And here it is now. I would be rude not to use the opportunity to get the transfer table out of storage. OK, let's zoom back. Well, that doesn't look too bad. The layout is a bit bigger now, of course, but it still fits well within the space. I also have more operator space, which is nice. Let me drag an operator symbol on the canvas. You'll see I have added a siding as well, so I can rail stock easier right in front of the operator. So let's recap. The maximum train length is now 180 centimeters. We have two reverse loops and an additional passing possibility in the station. We have additional functionality in the depot as well. But the layout is not great for automation despite the modifications. I think the maximum I could run here is three trains, maybe four with a lot of wiring and a few relays. But even then, I think this might be a bit boring. On the other hand, the layout is much more versatile in terms of routing than what I have now. The current layout only offers two routes, a short one and a long one, in a single direction. This one allows me to turn trains around, do a figure eight, among other combinations. So, we are not quite there yet. I played around with a few more tweaks, but in the end settled for an additional loop which is marked in violet on the screen. There is a long bridge at the top to give the layout a bit of height, but I will keep it as low as possible, as nothing needs to go underneath. If we get our trains back, we have a few more options. First of all, I can run two trains on the parallel loops, which can exceed the 180 centimeter length. Secondly, I have more options for multi-train operations, and running four or five trains following each other should be easier to achieve in this configuration, I think. If I ever wanted to add a few accessories and buildings, this is how this would look, roughly. I think it's quite nice. Okay, with all this, I think we are definitely going somewhere now. The next step would be to look into block system options and signaling, as well as electrics, and add all of these to the plan. But this video is getting long already, so I will cover these aspects in another installment, I think. I plan to share the layout using the Community Layout feature in Rail Modeler Pro, and as a direct download in a couple of formats, there will be a link in the description upon or shortly after the upload of the video. If you made it that far, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. This is much appreciated. So are all the subscriptions, likes and shares you have been kind enough to give me. I find them very rewarding and they are the best way to help the channel in reaching a wider audience. Many thanks again for this, and bye for now.